أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس آمنت بالله صدق الله في الناس وصدق رسول الله ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حمد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حمد مجيد اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا ورزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اشرح صدورنا اللهم يسر أمورنا اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من قلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع وإلم لا ينفع ودعوة لا يستجاب لها آمين يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> I hope uh, all of you will be fine inshallah and uh, I'm very much thankful to all of you to join this uh, Quranic class uh, that's weekly Quranic class so uh, I ask Allah to bless this gathering and uh, bless this gathering with his noor, with his rahmah and make us all the people of the Quran, Ahl al-Quran and make us all steadfast upon this thing. Ameen. So uh, before I start, uh, the disclaimer of these classes is um, we uh, try to understand the Quran with this motive to uh, know what Allah has said and the second motive to live this Quran by, to live our lives with this Quran. So how can we live the Quran is through following the commandments of Allah in the Quran. That's uh, what it means to live by the Quran. So we ask Allah to make it easy for us to uh, recite Quran, understand Quran, and live by it. I mean. So as you all know, the um, last uh, Sunday we uh, tried to understand the background of uh, Surah Falak and Surah Nas. So today, um, in the background, uh, we all studied that. Uh, uh, how uh, uh, a magic magic spell was performed on Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and how he got rid of it, and what would uh, what happened during the time of uh, when he was uh, performed magic on, and then uh, what were the faculties which were affected? So scholars say that it was his personality, not the prophethood. All the works related to prophethood were unaffected. So, yes, that's a prophet. Prophets, uh, prophets, prophethood are not affected. But if there's a person like us, so our personality will be affected and our daily life will be affected with the magic. So uh, we should always seek protection uh, from Allah about these things. So may Allah uh, protect us all from every evil and every uh, magic. So um, today we are going to discuss about uh, Surah Nas. Surah Nas uh, is the uh, 114th Surah in the Quran. That's the last Surah in the Quran. Uh, sometimes what happens is uh, when there's a last passage of any book, uh, we feel uh, it's not important, it's not that important. I have already got that knowledge. Um, it's of least consideration. But here Allah has kept it at the end of the Quran with the motive, with a specific motive and uh, with a motive to protect us. 
so that will be protected all the time and these two surahs are very small that even even children are able to recite it in children are able to um, memorize it very easily like surah ikhlas surah falak surah nas these are very small surahs otherwise allah would have um, uh, made them into um, 10 ayas 15 ayas 20 ayas or more than that but allah knew us Allah knew our capacities. La yukallifu Allah nafsan illa bus'aha. Allah knew our capacities. Like how much they can memorize, how much they can do within the individual capacity. So Allah has kept it at the end of the Quran with a motive to protect us so that we seek his protection on daily basis. So this surah um, is... Uh, it deals with the actions of human being and whispers, whisperings of uh, jinn and shaitan. And um, it's like a sharp sword against shaitan, against those who perform evil tricks. Right? So uh, Allah um, um, says in the first ayah, Qul a'udhu say I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind with the Lord of mankind it means that I am seeking shelter I am seeking protection I am seeking a safe place with the one who is the Lord of mankind? Birabbin Nas. If we go by the word, uh, if you remember, we have already uh, studied this when we were studying this Surah Fatiha. I tried to explain what A'udhu uh, Billahi Shaitan Rajim means. We are seeking protection. Uh, we are seeking Isti'aza. <clears throat> Here also, Allah makes us to say, Kul nas. Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of mankind or in the Lord of mankind. The word kul, it is like a command. Command to whom? Command to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam first, then the whole creation, the whole ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So say, and it is... Uh, it, it is an antidote to all the orientalists who believe that Quran has been written by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But here, if a person will write Quran, if a person will write any book, then he will not say that kul. He will not say, say, I am doing this, I have to seek refuge in someone else. So, he will not say that. If I am writing a book, I will write my thoughts. I will not command myself to do this. So, it is an antidote to Orientalists and those who believe that Quran was written by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, it is a command to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to every one of us, including the last person who will come on the day of, till the day of judgment, who will come. Then Allah uses, Kul a'uz bin nas, say, I seek refuge in the law of mankind. Nas, the word nas means people. Right? Nas is actually the uh, plural form of the word ins. Ins means one. Nas means plural. Nas means people. And Allah has used Lord. Allah has used Rab. Rab means Lord. But Rab has various meanings. Rab has various meanings. For example, Master, Lord, Maintainer, Sustainer, Protector, Nourisher creator, destroyer. All the things are kept in this word. Rabb. This, uh, when Allah mentions his lordship, his rububiya over humankind, it includes the fact that he created them, he created us, he designed us, and he manages our affairs. He manages our affairs. And what does it mean he manages our affairs? It means he is he alone is responsible for our upbringing. It is he 
who rectifies and improves our situations and it is he only and alone who protects us from every harm and guards us from corrupting influences right that's why allah has used rububiya and allah has used like uh, birabbin nas law of human kind human kind means the whole creation right the entire creation why does he do that why did he uh, say like that because he informs us that he remains our lord and master regardless of how great we may become for example if i become billionaire if i become someone else who is who is having the power for example pm of a country or president of a country or president of the world for that matter but still why why allah use this rububiya because he wants us uh, he wants to inform us that no matter how much bigger you become i'll be the supreme one above you and he instructed that refuge be sought from our evil for example if you are having some kind of evil if you are um um experiencing some evils then then refuge must be sought from him only and by mentioning them uh, by uh, mentioning his lordship uh, specifically means that he alone can do that and it means and he clarifies only he can provide shelter to us he can provide us shelter he can provide us refuge he can protect us only he not anybody else right then allah says that malikin nas malikin nas we should pronounce it correctly malikin nas when we you when we uh, recite surah fatiha what do we say alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin arrahmanir rahim maliki yawmiddin malik here it is malik malik m a l i k in english right malikin nas in fatiha allah says malikin nas you see how coherent is quran allahu akbar malik means owner malik means owner Mal- maliki yawmiddin he is the owner of the day of judgment he owns it whatever in uh, in that will be he owns that right and then here allah uses malikin nas malik malik means king why allah uses malik is that he wants to inform us he alone has absolute power and authority over humans over all of us over the creation of human kind and we all are his slaves and possessions it means he is the king of kings and that's the reason because of this rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited uh, us all to keep this name why because if i am using malik for uh, myself as a name then uh, malik means the king which i am not so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that if you want to use this word use this name then use abdul malik abdul malik abdul means slave of malik right servant of malik i don't i don't usually use servant i use i always use slave because abd means slave in literal translation of arabic it means slave right abd uh, abdul malik so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited uh, every one of us from taking this title without abd and allah says allah uh, makes this mention because he wants us to understand that he is the true king who alone can provide security for people in the times of calamity and in the times of difficulties and he is the only one who can come to our aid whenever we have any attack from external forces or internal forces he only can be he only can aid us you have the uh, story of badr 
you have the event of Badr. What happened? Angels descended down and helped Rasulullah and the Ashab. And um, they all were led by, commanded by, they all were uh, supervised by whom? Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu He was leading them. And they fought against Kuffar. They fought against Mushrikeen that time. Here, the uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Ashab were 313. Like plus minus 313. And those people were 1000. Plus minus. Again. And um, whenever you uh, have any anything like this, any event like this, you say that no, um, those people uh, who have thousand armies, thousand people in the army, then they'll be, uh, they can overpower anyone. They can overpower any army because they are more in number. But what Allah did is, He made sure that He granted His help. And He made angels descend down, including Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu waslam, so that to fight against Kufar. Right? So Allah says that if I am Malik, I mean that I am the only one who can aid you. Right? And the king is one who does what he wishes. He is the only one who wishes, who does what he wishes and uh, uh, through his statements and commands. And he is obeyed if he commands. Whatever Allah has commanded us, we have no option other than to obey him. We have no other option. We have to obey him because he is our malik. He is our king. We are his slaves. We owe him our lives. We owe him everything uh, which is uh, surrounding us. We owe him this air through which we are alive, this oxygen. We owe him everything. And then, uh, uh, Mufassirin says that Allah created us, the whole creation, the mankind, with his rububiyah, with his lordship. And rules us with his mulk, with his dominion, and enslaves us with his ilahiyah, which is coming next. Allah says in the Quran, in third ayah, uh, nas, right? The Lord of uh, the uh, Lord of people, right? Ilah, um, the uh, word Ilah has uh, is has two meanings. The one it means that the one who doesn't deserve worshiping, but people are worshiping it or him or her, and the one who deserves to be worshipped, and if people worship him or not, he will still be called as the real. Ilah, right? The Ma'bud, the one who deserves to be worshipped, Ma'bud e Barhaq, right? So, Allah says here, see, um, if we go by the first meaning, like the one who doesn't deserve worshipping, but people worship it or him. So, uh, we have many examples. I don't want to name, but we have Many examples when people use objects, people use idols, people use uh, even uh, those things which have been created by Allah, they keep them as, they worship them. They worship uh, animals, they worship uh, the heavenly bodies, including sun, including moon, and then um, they worship... Uh, <laughs> Many other things which they themselves create, for example, idols. But the other meaning of this ayah is, this ilah is, the one who deserves worshipping. And if people are not worshipping him, he will still be the real God. He will still be the real ma'bud, ilah. <clears throat> and 
allah is the true god of human beings and uh, and what what this ayah does is it negates the existence of any other objects of worship and creation it means no one shares in his lordship or his kingdom is in his dominion and he alone is their god and he alone and he only is the one who deserves our worship so the conclusion is it is inappropriate to associate partners in allah's divinity and it is he is without associates in his lordship and kingdom right so it means it is obviously incorrect to call on for example if i will call sun please uh, help me or if i will call moon please help me what will it do to me so it is completely incorrect it is completely haram to call on pair for be scared of or have hope in somebody else or love somebody else other than allah or love someone more than allah more than allah's commandment for example um you have a friend he is he or she is a close friend to you and uh, he tells you uh, let's have a cup of wine what do you say you will say it's haram and then he will say no you are my true best, true friend you are my best friend so how can you reject my offer i am giving money you don't have to pay i am your best friend i'll i'll pay for it if you reject it then you love allah more than that person you love allah more than everyone in the world if you don't reject it if you uh, get swayed or get influenced by his or her call to uh, a cup of wine then you have disobeyed allah and you have disliked the commandment of allah what is the commandment it's simple khamr is haram it has been explained in surah maida khamr is haram and uh, there are other things also they are haram we can't say that, no 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 now wine can be uh, uh, this uh, it can be permissible for some mom and it can be uh, it can be like this and we will give justification no then it means that i don't love allah more than that per- this person i love this person more than allah so i have rejected the command of allah over this person who is his creation why don't we understand who is his creation he is his creation uh, why should i love him more than allah i should love allah more than everyone in the world including my parents i should love rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i should love his commands so it is completely haram so no one should be submitted to other than allah no one should be called upon other than allah and no one should be trusted in besides allah right and uh, with the same uh, thought in mind rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said um if you were to ask uh, even a lace of your shoe lace what is that lace if i go to shopkeeper he will give me laces for 2 rupees for 5 rupees for 10 rupees it is just a tiny thing but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says here if you were to ask for even the shoe lace it is in a metaphorical sense you should ask from allah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said idha sa'alaka fas'alillah if you want to question if you want to ask ask allah fas'alillah ask allah ask allah only and here allah did not use uh, pronouns by saying um, the lord of mankind uh, their king and god why did, why did he uh, separate these three ayas he could have just said it in one ayah only right 
because each attribute was mentioned separately and the term human kind is repeated each time why because the lord of human kind the king of human kind and the god of human kind these are three attributes these are three claims which allah makes and why allah makes them separately because allah wants us to understand his dominion his lordship his kingship and it means that refuge must be sought with all of these attributes combined do you know any person who has all these attributes who is lord of mankind who is the king of mankind who is the uh, god of mankind do you know any other any person in the world who has these attributes no no one else because allah is only the one who can provide us shade who can provide us protection no one else can do that right and uh, in fourth ayah allah says min sharral waswasil khannas from the evil of the whisperer who withdraws right we have time yes we have uh, 11 minutes i try uh from the evil of wis- of the whisperer who withdraws waswas means tempter whisperer the evil one and it also means shaitan so what happens is uh, human beings don't get easily tempted they don't get easily swayed so what shaitan does is he is constantly trying to like he is constantly coming and whispering the thoughts whispering the bad thoughts so that we answer him so that we answer his whisperings the person or the one who does it who comes constantly and uh, whispers is called as waswas it means whisperer right then uh, the word khannas khannas has come from the word khunnus which means to hide after coming in limelight which means to hide after whispering it happens with all of us uh, we uh, we should not say that no 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 it doesn't happen it doesn't happen to me it happens to all of us it does happens to all of us every one of us every one of us it happens shaitan comes he whispers and then he withdraws khunus khanas has come from the word khunus which means to hide after coming in like that so what he does is he comes whispers hides hides himself even though we can't see him he uh, gets away and comes back tries again and hides him uh, himself and he does it constantly he does it constantly until we get influenced until we get swayed by his uh, issues by his whispers right so it is the uh, work of shaitan and shaitan is uh, uh, he is not in haste unlike us he is not in haste he does things properly he does things constantly he has very much consistency if we have to learn consistency from anybody else anybody it is shaitan we have to learn consistency from him you see <laughs> because he comes and whispers some bad thoughts and goes back comes again even if we while him every now and then a'ud billahi minash shaitan rajim okay he says okay take your time take your time no problem i'll come back i'll come back no problem i have time i have time so he comes back and again so we have to be very much powerful against him we have to use these words a'ud billahi minash shaitan rajim la hawla wala quwwata illa billah these surah falak surah nas we have to use these words against him because we are weak in that and 
it also means when whenever uh, uh, Maulana Amin Ahsan Islahi Rahimahullah says that whenever a shaitan makes a person to commit any sin, he makes himself free from the blame and leaves the person. That means he betrays the person. That's why he is called as Khazul. Khazul. When he does it, when he comes, he goes back. And then when we commit any sin, we blame Shaitan. But Shaitan is nowhere. He has gone to another client. He has gone to another prey. We all are his praise. He makes use of us. He makes us commit sins and then goes back. Goes back to another person, another client. I told you, he's very busy. At the same time, he's very calm. He's very um, uh, patient. Unlike us. He comes back and, and he's very consistent. He's very consistent. So, <clears throat> what he does is he comes to us and makes us commit sins and then goes back. So he betrays us. We can't we can't um, tell Allah that uh, he was the person. And Shaitan on the day of judgment he will say, Maalekum bi Sultani. No, I'm not. I'm not your Sultan. I was not your Sultan. I just said something and you took it. Is this my fault? He will withdraw himself. He will not be blamed. He'll say, uh, uh, "Is it is is it that my is it my fault? I told you some things. I told you some lies. You accepted. Was that my my issue? You accepted it. That was that was your issue. I just had some things in my mind. I just had some alternatives to your isolation, to your seclusion, but uh, you opted me." And he, he will even say that uh, your Lord, Allah has promised you certain things. Rasulullah had promised you certain things, but you opted my suggestions, you opted my alternatives, you opted my uh, things, my thoughts, my whispers. So, uh, should I be blamed then? Because he does that. So, there are, there are two phases of Two phases. You can write them down. We have four minutes. Uh, if this meeting ends, uh, you uh, please join back. We have still uh, three minutes, uh, four minutes around. Uh, because uh, there are many other things, many other uh, important things which are coming up in this surah. So I would like to uh, um, complete the surah uh, today only. Because I'm traveling next week. So there are two phases of Vaswas al Khannas. Uh, in phase one, what happens in phase one is there's an evil desire in a heedless person uh, who is uh, not paying attention to what Allah has said, who is not paying attention to uh, what Rasulullah has, has said. So there's evil desire. And there are Chains into evil intentions, whether I should do or not, and then there is evil act. There is a sin. The person commits sin. Now, the phase two involves certain things. Shaitan calls the person for open disbelief. He says that oh, you disbelieve in God. You go for shirk. You go for kufr. You do the rebellion against Allah. You do the uh, rebellion against Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. If he is, um, if he, if the person is protected from that, then he uh, goes to next level. The shaitan goes to next level. I told you he is very patient and he is very smart. He goes to next level. What is that? He creates enmity of the righteous people. For example, I am here. I was already protected from the first evil. So what he will does is he will put enmity in my heart and mind against righteous people. Do you understand? He will put enmity 
in my heart and mind against those righteous people which are outside. You say they are very bad, they do this, they do that, they are not following uh, Allah, they are saying very lies, uh, they are not uh, doing uh, the correct job, they are creating fatwas, they are saying that no, 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 you should not do this, they are saying that, they are saying that you should do this, they are creating prohibitions, they are making prohibitions, no, 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 they are not good. Again, if I am saved from that, from developing enmity towards the righteous people, then he invites me for misguidance and innovation. He invites me for that. What is misguidance and innovation? I am a Muslim. I remain in the uh, heart of Islam. So what he will put in my head is, uh, why not to create something new? Something new means which have not been practiced by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which have not been practiced by the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So, he creates those thoughts. What will it do? This will do nothing. Because uh, it's called as Bid'at. The innovations in Islam. We have uh, some innovations in Islam which have been, I don't know, <clears throat> which people are practicing on daily basis, then the, those things are from shaitan. If this meeting ends, please join back. So, uh, if I am saved from misguidance and innovation, then shaitan goes to next level. 